There's plenty of blame to go around in the Steelers' 31-10 embarrassing loss to the Cleveland Browns in Week 6. The reality is, though, many of these things are fixable. It's not the end of the season just yet, but a lot of things didn't go right for them either. With Behind the Steel Curtain and Steelers Film Room, I'm Neil Kulong. We're going to dig into one of the recurring themes over the last couple games for the Steelers. In particular, the, the Steelers' short yardage situations against the Browns. Some plays worked fairly well, some plays didn't work at all, some plays were designed to work a lot better than they did, and just one or two key blocks made and missed made the difference. At the same time, you also have to remember, the guys on the other side of the ball are getting paid as well, and the Cleveland Browns made a few big plays at the same time. All those things considered, the Steelers still have a ways to go as far as their short yardage game goes, and if they're going to get this 3-3 three and three season back on track, they're going to have to figure something out pretty quick. We're going to take a look at four plays here on Steelers Film Room, so sit tight and let's break them down. The first play we're going to look at here on Steelers Film Room, you're going to see Tayshawn Gibson, the Brown safety, inching closer here on the offensive left side of the line of scrimmage. Tight end Heath Miller is right there and he sees him, and it's going to be Miller's responsibility to turn Gibson back inside a little bit as the Steelers are going to look to run some misdirection. Now, the biggest issue after losses is always the play calling, right? Play calling is terrible every single game a team loses. But watch this. If Miller is able to, to sustain his block, at least to get to the outside shoulder of Gibson and get in the way of this, Le'Veon Bell is going to have a long way to run. There really isn't anybody here from the Browns that's going to be able to make a play on him probably until 10 yards after the line of scrimmage. And even then, it's a one-on-one -on -one situation. He makes that one safety, the deep safety there for the Browns miss, he's going to, he's going to score. So the reality is this wasn't a play call, this issue. This was one missed uh, block by the two-time Pro Bowl tight end Heath Miller, something he doesn't necessarily do all that often, but it was one play that Gibson sniffed out pretty well and, and made a good play on the ball. The reality is, though, Miller's got to be able to get to his outside shoulder, and they've got to be able to sustain that block if they're confident running that play. For all the bad and terrible things that happen in every single play that doesn't work out in an NFL game, you do see a few that work out very, very well, and, and a lot of it has to do with the offensive execution. You even get some examples of defensive players not doing what they're supposed to do either, and this play is a good example of both of those. The Steelers have the ball here third and three with 843 left in the first quarter. You take a look at Brown's defensive end, Paul Kruger, number 92 here on the offensive left side. Look at what he's going to do with the snap. Right away, he's going to swim around Steelers' left tackle, Kelvin Beecham, which is exactly what Beecham wants him to do. All Beecham needs to do is just hook him in, and Kruger is effectively taking himself out of the play. Along with that, take a look at David DeCastro here from the right side. He and Marcus Gilbert are both going to lay a block down on the line, and DeCastro is going to release and get to the second level and take that linebacker a long way. He's the outlet player on that. He's the guy that has an opportunity to stop this play short if he's free, but DeCastro sealed him off pretty much right away. This is a well-executed play. It's a great run. That's why it went for 13 yards, and it does show the Steelers do have the ability to run the ball in short yardage situations. They don't need to throw it all the time, and they don't need to pound it up the middle uselessly as if that's something that's going to work every single time. They're able to maintain a level of flexibility if they can maintain the same level of cohesion and execution from their offensive line. They showed that in this play, and it's definitely an example of something that worked out in this game. Not everything can last, though. As you can see here, another short yardage situation. The Steelers have the ball first and goal with 7.14 left in the first quarter. This is all on the same drive. Both of the Steelers' tight ends here are in a, a, kind of a diamond formation, and what they're going to look to do is stay hidden as to what their intention is before the snap. But at the snap, tight end Matt Spath, who's off to the right side, is going to block down to his left while Heath Miller pulls around that right side. And the idea here is to open up a seam on the cutback lane for Le'Veon Bell. Bell chooses to cut this back to the left, and I'm not sure that's exactly what he was supposed to do on this play. It, it's a zone run, and it doesn't look to have a specific set pattern, but it looks like the strength of the run is going off to the right side. There isn't a whole lot there, and, and it's not clear if there's much more to the right side either. This could just be a good defensive play by the Browns, but Bell doesn't appear to, to be going into the right spot. The play wasn't blocked that way, and what's really tipped off about that is wide receiver Marcus Wheaton, who's on the right side. You watch him act as if he's blocking down on the cornerback right away, but he's going to cut hard down to the left as if he's looking to, to hit that safety uh, right where Bell would be. If Wheaton could get that block and Bell had cut to the outside, Bell might be able to turn the corner on the defense and get to the front pylon for the touchdown. 
Obviously, ifs and buts were candy and nuts, we'd all have a Merry Christmas. It's not a guaranteed thing, but it's Bell's decision where to run with the ball, not necessarily the play call, especially in a zone offense. He might have been able to cut this back for a better gain to the right side, but that's not the choice that he made in this play. We've looked at something of a questionable play call that actually could have been a big gain. We've looked at some pretty shoddy execution on behalf of the Steelers, and we've seen a play that probably could have gone for a lot more yards had the Steelers executed properly. They had one that they ran very well, but the last one here is just flat out an example of good defense. As you can see at the snap here, middle linebacker Carlos Dansby, who's lined up directly in front of strong safety Dante Whitner, both of them immediately see something in the Steelers' offense as soon as Miller motions from right to left. Both of them are pointing out different things and, and communicating with the rest of the defense, but watch Dansby as he's going to move the defensive tackle a gap over to his right. That's going to shade the other side tackle in a little bit, but he's opening up the lane for himself. What he's basically going to do is shoot the gap here uh, right over the Steelers' strength of their offense. And in doing that, what he's indicating is that he's reading a run off to the left side, and he's going to try to cut that lane off and force Le'Veon Bell to cut back to his right. He's doing that because he knows exactly where Whitner is going to be on the play as well. So if you look at it uh, from right at the snap, Dansby's going to crash hard into the line of scrimmage, and Whitner is right where he's supposed to be. He's reading that backside gap. And because Dansby pushes as hard as he does, he forces right tackle Marcus Gilbert to come back down, and instead of reaching to, to get Whitner at the second level, he's going to have to contain Dansby for making a big play in the backfield. That leaves Bell isolated with Whitner one-on-one, -on -one, and that's usually a situation a, a strong safety as aggressive and as strong as Whitner is, is going to be able to make. And he does. He makes a big hit on the play, but Bell delivers a little bit of his own, picks up a two-yard gain, but you can mark, mark this one down as a win for the defense. This Steelers team, and the offense in particular, is still struggling in a lot of ways, and that's a mild way of putting they just lost 31-10. to 10. Short yardage situations were not the main difference in this game. There are plenty of other things the Steelers didn't execute on properly. But these situations are becoming more and more frequent. It's not just the play calling. It's the simple little details in the execution piece of the game. Miller's block should have been made, and that's a block he makes easily nine and a half times out of ten. They have a big gain because of the effort from DeCastro, but Le'Veon Bell on another play doesn't read the cutback properly and goes away from the strength of the play. They get just beaten by a, de a veteran defensive team that played pretty well in this game. All of these things contribute to generally an offense that is not scoring points and is not converting on first down, on third downs. Bigger issue uh, of the plays we didn't highlight, the multitude of passes that the team continues to make on third down despite the fact that they haven't worked and they didn't work in the last couple games either. Top to bottom, these are all adjustments that the team's going to have to make. And if they're going to make a serious run at the postseason this season, as they're sitting at 3-3, three and three, they're going to need to make them quickly. With Behind the Steel Curtain in Steelers' film room, I'm Neil Kulong.